Hey there, WebDM backers, I'm Pruitt, and this is Jim Davis, and today's show is a special look at uh, homebrewing your own monsters, uh, with a little bit more of a refined look, uh, given our recent uh, experience. So let's get into it on today's WebDM. Worlds of WebDM Weird Wastelands is our first book, and it's live on Kickstarter now. It's an environment-based toolkit for DMs and players where we give you everything you need to create player-driven 5e games in the fantasy post-apocalypse. We're introducing new support for wilderness exploration, giving you a complete class, the Scion, 12 new subclasses, tons of locations with maps, monsters, NPCs, adventure hooks, and hey, it's us so you know we're going to include badass encounter tables and more. We're writing it exactly how we think a 5e book should be well-organized, full of references, and our WebDM wisdom, with tips and support in how to make the content easily fit into any 5e game and run the best games of your life. Back it on Kickstarter now. Link here and in the comments and description. All right, Jim, here we are. Uh, just another week here on WebDM. Uh, we got to talk today about some big monster action. Yeah homebrew monster design we've done a show about this before right yeah a while back a while back but but since then we have actually created some big monsters for multiple yeah. projects uh for 2c gaming and others uh ghostfire gaming uh so we have a little bit more a little different perspective i guess a little bit more like yeah on the level real world uh so let's uh first off what's what, uh, when when you're thinking about your monster design here uh in in your new refine your new refined uh thinky brain uh what's the first thing that pops up for you like what's the first thing you're thinking of yeah yeah so i i like i find that the first thing that i go for is a big just a big idea kind of list you know I, I, usually i have just like a, literally a blank piece of paper and just start free associating ideas on it um i might have some sort of generator you know that 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 might get me going you know for monster ideas or something like that but a lot of times i i just start with like okay what's in my head what i've been thinking about recently um if, if i have a prompt or something like that like i know what kind of monster i want or what sort of mm -hmm. uh, niche i want them f to fulfill like that'll help me out um but at this stage it's more just like what, what am i thinking of what what's going on and there's really no bad ideas at this point like everything gets put down um yeah, when yeah. i'm thinking about it, spaghetti know. against the wall like yeah just yeah finding what sticks yeah. yeah and like this this is for both like monsters that i that i make for freelance design as well as like home games and things like that and, and like you know there's always the monsters that are end up on like a sticky note or in the margins of the monster manual that you make but every now and then you want to like do one up proper and 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 like have a, a full-on custom monster and so this is the process for it and it starts with that brainstorm just what mm -hmm. what do i want this monster to 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 do or to look like what kind of uh moments can i envision in my head whenever i think about it those are usually the things mm -hmm. that i'm trying to conjure up as i'm as i'm going through and listing ideas out um so yeah, yeah. You know, you know what's what's interesting, Jim. Uh, when I when I'm trying to think about monsters like that, sometimes I will get in. Uh, this is why it's good to play other games sometimes. Yeah, so certainly. Designing monsters for Five E, I will sometimes get into a cipher mindset, and yeah, like oh, yeah, the sentence games. that creates your character. I'm an Boom. adjective noun that verbs. I'm a sneaky fighter who crawls in dark spaces. Like yeah. thinking about yeah, my yeah. monsters that way. Yeah. Like I want them to be a brutish fighter that you know has a special armor, you know? And so like, let that be your initial jot down sentence, <laughs> but it's a simple framework. Uh, yeah. To keep yeah. Yourself from, because again, this is just brainstorming. Like this is pie in the sky. Anything goes. Yeah. Anything goes. I, it's interesting. You mentioned that. Cause I tend to think of, of monsters in terms of like their fourth edition monster roles. Brute, soldier, mm -hmm. artillery, skirmisher, lurker, oh, yeah. controller, and leader, right? And then, like, mm -hmm. I find that really helpful in terms of of just sort of the narrowing in on what I like. But it's sort of a, it's a similar kind of like it's it's it starts to be able to summarize 
what it is that the monster is about. Because at this stage, you're just bringing in everything. You might not even know what you want a monster for. You just are thinking up custom monsters for a location or something like that. And so what you're looking for in the first step is patterns and themes and something to hook the monster on some sort of framework or something. And for me, mm. this might happen immediately as I start brainstorming things, or it might be one of those where I brainstorm a list of ideas and I leave it alone for a while, let it simmer and come back and look at the list and just go, there's nothing popping out at me. There's nothing that's like really getting me going. Um, then I might like, start looking for commonalities or, or relationships between various ideas that I could play with. But eventually it, without fail, I will always find something that's like, okay, I got it. Like, this is it. Mm -hmm. And in terms of like a step for you to use <laughs> in your own homebrew design, and it's very nebulous and ephemeral, like, uh, s stare at this until you get it. <laughs> uh, you know, piece of advice, but that's, Largely how it works uh, uh, for me is that there's something in the combination of ruminating over the ideas, looking for patterns, looking for themes. What is it that I want from the game? Asking myself these questions as I consider the concept that I've brainstormed mm -hmm. that a hook will emerge. Something will happen. And once I have that hook, I'm, I'm ready. You know, I'm good. Well, I mean, you, you say it's kind of like just... It, it, it... It's, it's whatever dismissive i don't know <laughs> something's the, the, going the on the correct word right now but like but that is the essence of it like that's why you say you have to find the hook it has to grab you it has to reach out and like oh wait a minute and then you follow it you it's it's unmistakable in a creative sense when that moment when the muse descends yeah and yeah. you know almost like a light shines on the page on that one sentence you're like, oh, wait a minute. If I just switch this line with that other sentence over here and mm -hmm. mix these two monster ideas together, that's when the hook sets in. And, yeah. and never ignore that moment. Like, even yeah. if it wasn't your initial idea, that's the whole point of brainstorming. Like, it's that this isn't a final thing. This is just anything to think about. Right. And so... Yeah, just actually following that trail of, uh, of, of impulse that mm -hmm. kind of pulls you along. Like, oh, wait, no. Yeah, that's... <laughs> That's because that's what you want your players to feel. That's and, what your players feel. You that's know, where you're starting to hone in on the identity of yeah. what this monster is. So, like, for monsters that are in weird wastelands, a lot of this came from, like, okay, what are some just weird interactions with the rules that, that I might not have had before or things that I want to explore or, like, monsters with abilities I've never seen before. For uh, the Magicor, the hook was rather easy. This is a Manticore that has eaten a lot of magic sludge and has turned itself into a creature that is that is sort of immune to magic highly resistant to it can can dispel it can uh, you know can unleash a roar that will, that will break a spell as it's being cast that kind of thing and like but the expression of the ma the magic core as this sort of kind of lazy lion-esque kind of <laughs> creature that that would prefer to eat you but would really just prefer you to put your head in its mouth you know like <laughs> that's that's what it really wants and it might chat you up while that's happening like all of that came uh -huh. out of these initial brainstorm ideas because it's like okay what is it about a manticore that's fun well they have a face and a mouth and like they they have a they have a person face that okay well they they can talk to you then and but they also want to eat you and so there's that's where you know the idea kind of coalesces around it's like it's a magic eating manticore that will talk to you while it tries to eat your wizard's brain you know like once once I have that, I'm ready to, to write the stat block. You know, that that's enough in that moment to start actually putting mm -hmm. uh, mechanics to the beast. All right. So uh, thinking about uh, stat blocks, um, what part of the stat block do you actually focus on uh, first? Do you try to do you try to stat up its hit points first? Do you think about uh, skills and saves? Do you, like what like how do you dig down to to get that 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 chunk of data in there right so i usually start with the table that's in the the dmg <laughs> there's a uh in, in chapter eight there's a handy table of, of sort of parameters by cr for for what your monster uh 
ought to have. Like it's AC, it's hit points, damage per round, that kind of thing. And he uses this as a benchmark. Mm -hmm. Tends to produce a kind of a tougher, harder hitting monster than than some of the the ones that are in the core books, um, and kind of like that uh, about it. So that's where I start. And I'll go back to my initial brainstorm and look for any ideas that suggest uh, features of the monster or special attacks or or something, right? And and from that we'll we'll do a specific sort of design brainstorm, either looking up rules in the uh, you know player's handbook and the like, you know, like oh, okay, well, how does this interact with this rule? But that's only if I want to get really specific and have a very like specific mechanic interaction. A lot of times at this level, I'm just like it should have one like really big attack <laughs> that can like knock someone out mm -hmm. that has some kind of refresh, or you know, it'll have some sort of feature that you know gives it a stealth ability or you know lets it move around a lot and. As I go through section by section on the stat block, I, I fill in the obvious stuff first. When I, as I look at a blank monster stat block, I go, okay, I know it has this sense, or I know it has this damage reduction uh, or uh, resistance, or it's it's got proficiency in this kind of save. And just like the obvious stuff first, and then I go through it section by section and start answering those questions. Like, what kind of AC do I want? What armor does it wear? Is it natural? How hard do mm -hmm. I, you know, should it be it? And... I find that this stage as you're filling out a stat block and sort of like really setting up a monster and you're not like basing it off of another monster, you're not reskinning that it, it's very easy to go overboard. <laughs> like it's very easy to load up with like 10 different things it can, it has or can do. Uh, so I try to keep it mm -hmm. as simple as possible uh, and, and uh, understand that like I'm creating something I'm going to be using in a game when I'm running this monster and I want to be able to look at this thing quickly and understand what it does. N not everything needs to go in the stat block, you know, keep it simple. Yeah. That, I think that's, um, as much of a, a kind of a trope or a cliche it is for character to always forget that one ability that would have helped in that perfect moment, yeah. you know, because sometimes characters have too many abilities. It, it totally for on, I, I now know on the DM side happens all the time when you're DM in a big combat and then at the end of it, you look up and go, my guy had this ability the entire time that would have nullified that one thing that let y'all kill it in three rounds. And I hate myself right now because you're looking at a stat block with like, I can do like seven different things. And if it can do this, then it can do that, you know, and now I've got to roll to refresh this thing. And so you, you got a lot on your plate. Yeah. And so, yeah, when you're designing your own monsters, like keep that in mind. Like I, I try not to give more than three or four abilities Yeah. and even yeah try to make one of those passive like i don't have to think about it i just mm. announce it at the beginning and i know it's there and i don't have to worry about it every round unless x happens you know yeah uh, yeah but that's just me <laughs> yeah yeah no i i i'm the same way as as many sort of like passive things that i can give or or ones that re mm -hmm. reinforce each other so like looking at the magic core um, you know, as part of the design development, the latent spell casting started out life as a you're tracking the magic or spell slots, how many spell slots it consumes whenever it is sustained by magic and, and it otherwise like, you know, eats magic. Like it was this whole thing of like, you have to eat magic before you can cast any of these spells and you're tracking the slots that you have eaten plus the ones that you're, that are coming in. It was just a lot kind of fiddling it's and going lot. on right when you really could just say like yeah, if it's eating magic in the last 24 hours it can cast each of these spells once you know like it, in terms of like making a compromise between how it could exist sort of in my head as a design of like okay this is what it would look like and this is how it's going to go and everything this is a much more elegant way to present this this feature of the magic ore because all it says is if they've eaten entirely up to the dm is it is it the minute they eat a, a, a you know a player character spell out of the air that they can do this or have they snacked earlier today and they just have some magic spells <laughs> going on right like yeah yeah that's what i mean by keep it simple because in running this in combat i'm not going to want to track the spell slots like <laughs> it's one thing to say i'm going to do it when i'm thinking about it in a brainstorm it's quite another when i'm in the middle of like sitting down to to, to play a session and running this thing that I'm like, oh no, I didn't like this. I needed to think this through a bit more. <laughs> I don't want to yeah. have to deal with this right now. 
you know. Yeah, um, especially especially in the uh, magic infused subclasses that that are five E. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I got other things going on, uh, and as well as like managing this, you know, whole uh, combat. But like the rest of the traits of the mana core sort of speak to that simplicity too. And and you know, I cut out about three or four additional things it could do or had because when I was looking at it, like it was just too much and and even though some of them were passive it's like well okay all right like does it really need to be able to do this does it really also need to be able to do that like no what it needs to be able to do is sniff out where magic is and consume it and then gain some benefit when it consumes it um and so that's how we got to the 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 three that it gets uh latent spell casting magic senses and sustained by magic of course tail spike regrowth is comes with manticore but i'm not sure i've ever seen it come up in a game that manticores have to regrow their tail spikes. <laughs> well, I mean, sometimes on. the traits is, is there just is sort of part of world building, but uh, yeah, keeping it simple mm-hmm. and looking for emerging themes so that uh, I can then match the stat block with the lore that I've created. Okay. Well, yeah. So moving on to that aspect of it, because now that you have your stat block, you've got your abilities down you have to you have to think through like how many people have interacted with this like what is known about this monster what is known and is wrong like coming up with the lore is some of the the more fun stuff because you you can just kind of let your imagination go wild a bit yeah. but always trying to think of it like uh with regards to gameable elements i think yeah. is a, is an important part yeah yeah you you probably already started uh you know get a good grasp on the monster's lore during that initial brainstorm and then finding the hook and Mm -hmm. what i find is that sometimes as you're filling out a monster stat block and expressing the sort of traits of the monster mechanically what kind of attacks and things that it can do you realize like oh there's some extra here that i that i didn't know was going to be there and so like revising the lore afterwards so that it matches like it always really bothers me whenever i hear like from a lore side or something like, oh, this monster is terrible and terrifying and this and that, we should be afraid. And then, you know, and then it hits like a kitten um, or, or it's, you know, just yeah, not that, later. <laughs> right. Not that terrifying, yeah, yeah. you know, or, or monstrous. So I want to make sure that, that, uh, you know, the advertising uh, matches uh, what the, <laughs> the monster can do. Um, but then I'm also looking at the lore and everything around it as a way that like, it's either going to, trigger my memory whenever I run this monster again, or if somebody else is looking at the monster that'll help them, they're like, the monster is there to be interacted with. It, it's easy to create a monster that lives by itself alone and doesn't interact with anyone and is just super badass all by itself in its lair. Mm-hmm. But like the monster- it's got a bunch of treasure. It's got a bunch of treasure, yeah. right? It's super awesome, you guys. I can't <laughs> wait for you to see it. But like yeah. the point of, go- of revising it in light of like what you've written in the stat block is to look for ways that you can make sure this thing will produce some kind of conflict for uh, the players to get involved in. Like, what is it that makes it monstrous? What does it do that the players are going to want to, to come to grips with it? And like, Mm -hmm. when they do, what are the rewards for that? Is there anything about this monster that it can like, can it give them something? Can it be befriended? Um, does it carry anything that they can take? Is there something that they can do with its body? Cause I, you know, players always <laughs> want to like take off horns and scales and, you know, so, so mm-hmm. like for the magic core, you can take its tail and turn it into a weapon, right? Like you can make a, a, a magic repelling shield out of its hide. You know, you could probably befriend it and maybe learn some magic uh, if, if, you know, you role played it well enough. Like the the, ma- mm-hmm. the magic core is going to seek out the party that seeks out the people that drink potions and cast spells because their blood and bones taste delicious. You know, it's it's <laughs> it's <laughs> meant to go out there and cause trouble to to disrupt trade routes, to be a menace so that it it comes built in with conflict. And it's really important mm-hmm. uh, for me when I'm designing a monster that there is conflict on multiple axes uh, so that, um, you know, it's, it's, it's clear how the party can interact with it and, um, you know, have fun with it. Yeah. See, I'm just I'm just imagining an interaction with a with a magic or 
where like a wizard's like, well, the cleric can grow a limb back, so if right. they go to, go to the party <laughs> and they cut off part yeah. of like their own arm to mm-hmm. let it feed in order to get access or information or passage without conflict, and then immediately like cleric, please re- regrow this thing. Please you regrow know? that. Let's make well, finally have use for regeneration. Uh. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, hey, this is this could be a way. It's like well. That's part and parcel with dealing with the with the the, the beasts of the weird wasteland. You got to come Absol- to some, right. some, Absolutely. some interesting conclusions. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, and like all of this relates to each other. Like they're not discrete steps. That's like okay, now I'm done with this and moving on to the next one. Like you're constantly revising and looking back at things yeah. and revisiting and and like I what I want out of a, a stat block is is you know different based on what kind of monster it is. But there's sometimes I'm I'm you know, really fleshing out the lore or what it is that the monster's going to do. And I go, oh, wait, well, I got to go back to the stat block then because I've now, Mm -hmm. my lore contradicts it, but I like the lore better than, you know. So there's all this revision going on until finally it's like, I'm Mm -hmm. I'm done. Like, it's cleaned up. It it does what it needs to do. Uh, It's simple. It it has some sort of mechanical uh, either elegance to it or something new, some sort of new interaction. Um, There's a lot more to be said about the stat block. We might do a second show sometime uh, in the, in the next month about like actually going through section by section, um, but yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. When it comes to like damages and vulnerabilities and skills and stuff like that, oh, yeah, there's a that, lot yeah. to chew on. Uh, you know, pun intended there. Uh, but <laughs> um, <laughs> but yes, uh, that that final cleanup uh, is an important step. But always know, and I think it's okay to tell people this: it's never going to feel finished. It's always no. going to feel like you could do something else. Oh, yeah. You could tweak it just a little bit more. It's not, you're always going to have that impulse, right? Right. Or at least I, I've never not. Yeah. Uh, you always will. Yeah. I've never felt that way about something I created. I've never, there's nothing I've created, whether it's for game design or writing or anything mm-hmm. that I haven't yeah. looked at it and go, I could do, I could do it. I could do more. Like, <laughs> like, cause it's. Yeah, it, you know it. You know what you want, and you know what it's gonna be like. But at some point, you say like, mm-hmm. "This is done. I don't want to work on it anymore." You go back over. You make sure it's all cleaned up. And even if you're not like gonna show it to someone else, right? Like even if you're not doing this for mm-hmm. for others' benefit, you're just doing it for yourself in your own game. Having a cleaned up stat block of a custom monster that you've got a little lore typed out for it. You've got a stat block all done up. Like there's something satisfying about that. Yeah. Right. Like. I've got, mm-hmm. I, I, my goal is to have like an entirely custom monster manual of monsters I've made for my games that, that have, you know, nice little write-ups and, and they're not just scattered across seven different sticky notes and a, you know, a back of a form that I had to fill out for something else, you know, like, <laughs> that's, yes. you know, it's too real. It's, yeah. Right. <laughs> you know, like most of them are going to end up like that, but then you, you lose them. You don't have them anymore. And so. I like I like doing it proper for the ones that are uh, you know special. They're all special though. Yeah, so they're all my babies. Yes, yes. <laughs> Always be creative. The Let the tides of inspiration <laughs> take you in and out. Uh. <laughs> yeah.